Welcome to another one of our Digital Marketing Answered videos. I'm here with Chris Watson-James, who's head of our MarTech team. Hiya. And uh, we're going to be talking today about the importance of auditing um, technology, not just actually marketing technology, but uh, Chris, yep. um, auditing and assessing um, technology that you're using in a business. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is really to talk about what we mean when we talk about the tech involved in this. So you'll often hear things like tech stack or martech stack. And I think the main reason, you know, the starting point for doing these audits or these reviews is to think about what's actually involved in that tech stack. So for a lot of people, they'll think of the very ob the really obvious parts like the CRM or the sales tools. Yeah. But actually, the best way to think about it is to start from a kind of top down view of thinking of the tools, the processes and the systems that interact with your, your clients or your customers. Okay. Like things like your website, your email tools, social media, things like that. Okay. The next layer down is where you start to get into things like the CRM. So we've already mentioned that once, but um, that's usually at the core, the single source of truth of all of the stuff yeah. that we're talking about here. Yeah. But there's another kind of layer below that, which can be your operations, your IT, your back office systems, HR, all these things can be involved. Right, okay. And that really complicates it because for a lot of business owners, for a lot of business leaders, they're not always going to be aware of all the day-to-day -day processes and systems that happen all the way down through that tech stack. Okay. But for us and when we're working with people, it's the focus is about revenue generation, the, the, the elements of using the tech stack generate revenue and generate revenue at better cost. So we'll talk about things like cost. Home. So who's the kind of people that sh should watch this video but actually also care about this assessment of the tech stack? So it's definitely going to be business owners. So biz business owners whose businesses have scaled, have evolved, um, potentially they've brought in new key members of their team. So maybe they've got new heads of marketing, heads of sales, that kind of thing, because it's at those points as businesses have scaled and changed that owners of businesses and business leaders will be looking to solve specific problems yeah. and usually with specific solutions. Yeah. So a good example of that, you get your new marketing manager and they decide they want to send emails, you go and get a best in class email tool. Yeah. You get a new sales leader in, they want a new outreach program, so they go and get a new best in class outreach platform. Yeah. And at the time, it solves the problem and it moves the business forward. But as that business has grown and scaled, you've got more people internally making these decisions and yeah. owning different parts of the yeah. stack. And you've got this kind of this issue internally that these platforms, these systems, is, yeah. they don't talk to each other. Yeah. And that's kind of what's going to lead people to then start to get into the problems we'll talk about in a minute. Okay. So, it, but it's not just business owners though, is it? It's really people involved in the revenue. So, you know, uh, where businesses have grown significantly, we're now talking about people like CMOs? Yep, CMOs. Um, you might have kind of people who are working in the RevOps area, so you might have CROs as well coming in, getting involved. Um, I think ultimately it will depend on the scale of the business, but yep. certainly heads of departments that are involved, like you said, anywhere in the revenue operations okay. are likely to want to get involved, especially okay. if they are new in a business. Okay, okay. So... Um, in terms of like triggers, you've, you've mentioned growth, but what's, what are the other things that people should be thinking about, whether it's like now's the time yeah, to do sure. an assessment? So one of the things we see a lot of is people, not even that long ago, invested in systems that now just aren't cutting edge anymore, or right. perhaps just aren't up to scratch with what's now available. And sometimes that's nothing to do with the system itself or the platform. It's actually just because other platforms have surpassed it and now everybody integrates with that platform. Right. And a lot of the time it's that ecosystem around your main CRM that's the, just the issue because it's that that defines whether or not your platform is good enough, not the platform itself. Okay. So ultimately, if your social media, if your website, if your emails, whatever it is, doesn't attach to your CRM, you're not getting a single source of truth. You're not seeing okay. that customer journey from end to end. Okay. So, so growth your tools becoming outdated. Mm -hmm. What about um, like AI coming in? Yeah, definitely. You know, is, yeah. this, is it actually a matter because there are tools now adopting AI within their systems yeah, that actually almost everybody should be thinking about looking and auditing what they're doing? I think so. It's a big time of change right now, the time that we're shooting this. There is obviously AI is you know, on everybody's lips. And like you said, 
platforms that we work with, for example, HubSpot, they are starting to integrate AI as well. Yeah. Um, and it is an interesting time because it starts to blur the lines between each of the tools that we're talking about here. Yeah. Because suddenly you've got um, tools that are generating rich data for you, they're bringing in insights, they are doing things that previously you might have needed um, a specific trend tool or a specific insights tool to achieve. Yeah. You know, and we started talking a little bit about the cost thing earlier. And obviously yeah. every one of these tools has a cost. Right. So if you can start to think about consolidating these systems, not only are you simplifying your processes, you know, bringing your data in line, but yeah. you are likely going to reduce costs as well at the same time. Okay. So yes, we talked about businesses scaling, but actually in the current climate, businesses yeah. that want to kind of stand still, um, but weather the storm, right. this is also going to be for them okay. as well. So, so there is actually, doing this assessment, I mean, I think, having seen the results of some of the things that we've done when we've done these audits and, and looked through people's tech, mm. actually, I think cost is a, is a big thing. Because we've seen it where people haven't actually um, understood how much they're spending. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not just cost of platforms, because obviously some of these platforms are pretty expensive, but it's the cost of the maintenance, it's the cost of the time internally and externally. You know, we've come across these things where we're, we're auditing a tech stack for quite a big company, and it comes down to kind of, actually there's one spreadsheet at the core of everything that's, that's maintained by one guy, he's probably on quite a big salary, and he's spending a lot of his time just manually putting in data, and, and that's just, that's no way to, to grow your business, it's no way to kind of you know take control of your technology yeah. um, and that has a cost associated with it as well you know salaries are part of the cost that we would associate with this whole process yeah. okay we've understood a few of the reasons why people might start thinking okay I, I need to really um, do an audit or an assessment of my technology stack now what actually is it and, and how does somebody you know think about yeah. getting going with it what does it actually mean yeah, so there's a number of steps you'd need to take to make sure you're kind of hitting all the right marks. First thing is having right people involved. So yeah. you're going to start from a, a, a specific spot within the business. So, you know, we do approach things from a marketing point of view. Um, at the core of a lot of this is going to be marketing and sales. So yeah. ideally, you'd want to have, you know, stakeholders from both sides there involved in this process. Yeah. But you can make a starting point from within marketing. So you want to make sure you've kind of got your head of marketing involved, yep. someone that understands the process and potentially like a team leader and um, yep. somebody who you know is involved with the day-to-day -day workflows. So so the senior marketing leader is also engaging with people yeah, absolutely. who who are bo boots on the ground, if you like, using the tools. Yeah, so because if you haven't got that, ultimately what you're going to do is you're going to miss a process somewhere, maybe even a, a platform that people aren't aware is in use. Okay. Um, Sorry, and I interrupted. No, no, so. that's fine. And then you need to bring that into the into the mix. The the second and probably the most important thing is working out where your single source of truth is. Right. Because what you might find is across the business, people are kind of relying on data in different places, and that can still happen once this yeah. audit's happened. That's not necessarily a problem, but part of this process is going to be making sure that those sources of truth are aligned. Right. So that people aren't working from different truths, and then that's yeah. you know that's a real kind of fundamental thing. Yeah. But for a lot of people, at the core of their tech stack is going to be a CRM. Yeah. Um, it's not always the case, as we said. Some people are working from spreadsheets, and that does make their their you know their overall workflow a challenge. Um, well, it, I mean, it, to be honest, if you're a business and you're of a scale where you know innovation visuals talking to you, yeah. and you're still working off spreadsheets. It's going to be a starting point. You, 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 need, you, you need to be talking to us yeah, about definitely. using technology. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why, you know, we do work with a number of different CRMs. We often talk about HubSpot. It's, yeah. you know, it's at the core of some of the stuff we do. But there's lots of others out there. You know, we could okay. talk about Salesforce and um, okay. there's loads of options. So, once so, so bring you back. So first step, get the people involved. Set out where, you're, where your starting point is, which is for us usually the, the revenue area. So. Yeah marketing but also sales as well yep. okay and so yeah so you said a number of sets next one is yeah the next one is basically looking through those platforms looking through those systems working out what's actually in use in everyone's daily workflows okay and that really that really could be spreadsheets all the way through to a big crm there's lots of different elements that can be involved right. there and we would take a broad net bring them all in and work out what needs to be involved so you're saying that you're going to you know, when you do this, or whoever's going to be doing the audit assessment, you're looking and you're actually working through 
people's daily routine, their yeah, system. It's the process so as so well. it's like from we use this to do this, you're actually recording. So what, a classic example touched. of this is your head of marketing might say, we use, let's say, HubSpot, and yeah. your head of sales says, we use Salesforce. Yeah. And you might go, cool, that's tick the box. But actually, the process between those two is really important, yeah. defining the sales handoff and the lead assignment and all these complicated things that need to be written down, documented. Yeah. That's the process that's part of the tech stack. Um, and that's why we would go through the daily workflow of you know, key users to make yeah. sure we know what that looks like. And uh, interesting, so you talk about how those are used. So almost you shouldn't really call it just a tech stack because actually <laughs> it's, a, it's a process assessment yeah. as well as a, exactly. it's, it's a, it's a technology-focused like audit of how you do things. Yeah, exactly. And people talk about systems and really the systems are the tools and the processes that come together to work okay. those tools. So once you've got those, you then need to make a decision essentially of, are we going to replace a tool? Are we going to integrate a tool with our main CRM? Or yep. are we going to leave a tool alone and it's not part of this scope? You kind of have to have those three outcomes for everything you find within there. Yeah. And you need to accept that some stuff will be left alone. That's fine. Not yeah. everything needs to be pulled into this because it, it otherwise it turns into a really un, you know, unruly yeah. process. Yeah. But if you've got that set up and that outcome for each, each process and each yeah. system you find, you can then work out, cool, here's what we're going to consolidate, here's what we're going to integrate, here's what we're going to remove. When you've gone through and you've examined the processes as well as actually effectively logged all of the, the technology elements in place, so what, what happens next with that knowledge? Because that's, that's quite powerful in itself, actually looking at what's going on and, and the, if you like, the journey of information within uh, yeah. an organisation. It what is. What do you do with it? And it's a lot of data sometimes because you, you have to decide obviously what's relevant and what's not. But at that point, we then have to start thinking about how do we use best practice? How do we simplify this? What are our goals? What are we actually trying to achieve from this? Yeah. And I think that's a really important part of the process that we've probably not spoken about is the reason for coming to this, you know, yeah. going through this process. You need a goal. You need an outcome, something you're trying to achieve. Yeah. You now, we've talked about things like the cost. We've talked about things like streamlining processes and aligning teams and all these sorts of things. Yeah. But every business is going to have a slightly different variation of that. Some businesses will have problems in one area. Some will have a different, you know, and for a lot of people, the downside of not going through this is going to be having siloed data, siloed teams, you know, systems that don't talk to each other. So we need to make sure we know what those are so that we can then well, it, put a structure in place. Well, let's talk. I think it's worth probably explaining for people what are some of those challenges. Yeah. Because, interestingly, I think uh, some people don't realise that they've got some of these challenges until the light is shone yeah. on them, if you like, and kind of what the symptoms are. So if we can just to highlight something. So silo data. Yep. What silo data? So you might why, literally why have somebody care. You might literally have um, a sales team working in one platform, one CRM, marketing team maybe working in another one, and they don't share data. Yeah. So a really good example of why that's a bad thing would be attribution. So if you're thinking about how do I make decisions about budget spends, you're thinking about are my marketing activities actually successful? Are they attributing revenue? Well, if you're not pushing revenue data back through to your marketing platform. You're never going to know that. It's not going to be highlighted until someone points that out. Okay. So, so that silo data thing that can happen even. So, even if you could have a, if you had a, a connection, a data sync from the marketing people pushing automatically that lead in. What we're saying here is, if actually you're not connecting a lot of data fields and making use of that, yeah. the data still sells stays silo so you've got two big silos one small pipe and what we're actually saying is there's a lot that you're missing yeah absolutely and it tends to go hand in hand with uh, different goals so another another big reason to do this is setting goals so try not to use too much terminology and jargon on these okay. things but people talk a lot about rev ops and aligning goals across your business towards revenue generation yeah it's a fairly simple um you know, way of thinking about things, but it, it was a big movement a few years ago. Everyone talking right. about RevOps, it was a big buzzword. Yeah, yeah. Um, but actually, it's a really good point because you tend to have salespeople will have one to one particular goal. They're thinking about how many deals they're closing or how much commission they're earning, whatever it is that they're yeah. worrying about. 
But then you'll have your marketing team over here, they'll be worrying about how much traffic's coming to the website, which is not necessarily linked to yeah. how much revenue you're going to drive. The classic here is, isn't it? It's sales worry about revenue generated and deals closed and marketing are targeted on marketing qualified leads at MQLs yeah, and, you know, I know going a bit into jargon, but I think everybody knows MQL as marketing qualified leads. So you have this thing where somebody's targeting, you know, marketing throwing loads of MQLs into the into the mixer. Yeah. But actually revenue aren't getting the revenue out because they're the wrong type of MQLs. Yeah, and there's two lots of data immediately there that might not be being fed back. One is how much revenue is being generated from that source, from those marketing activities. Yeah. So you can't attribute that to your activities. Yeah. But the other thing is the feedback on the ones that aren't closed, you know, the ones that aren't being won, because we also need to think about the quality of the leads we're sending through. So yeah. You know, we talk as well, as well about having an SLA, service level agreement between your teams. And yep. that's part of this as well. That's a part of your tech stack. Yeah. An agreement of how many leads, the quality of the leads, how yep. they fit your ICP or your personas. All that yep. stuff should be part of this process. Yeah. Um, because we need to define from end to end what a lead looks like, when it should be handed off, who's going to be responsible on each side of that, yep. you know, that handoff. Yeah. And that all will come out in the wash when we go through this process. Okay, okay. So there's there's more to eliminate in siloed data than just plugging two systems yeah, next to each absolutely. other. Okay, and we and we covered some other bits and pieces there, but um, that's not you know that's not the only objective or the only problem that you uncover. So you know, um, I think from what you've said before, cost and yeah, I mean spend exactly. in many different formats. Ultimately, when a business gets to a certain size, as you know, other people within the business will get to make decisions on budget. Yeah. So ultimately, you're going to have you know, heads of marketing, heads of sales, heads of customer service, customer success, however many departments we want to include in this, yeah. will have all made decisions somewhere along the line of their, their choice, their best in class of their tool or their yeah. platform. And typically, until you get to an, you know, the next level, there won't be anyone in place keeping an eye on all of that making sure it's aligned, making sure all that's being brought together? Well, it's there. I think from our experience, what I would say is that the, the tools, the budget gets signed off mm. based on the requirements of a single area. Yeah. That's, that's the real issue, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's not that it was the problem signing it off, it was the problem that it was assessed only against what marketing needed or what customer success needed or what sales needed at that time. Yeah, absolutely. And when you look at some you know, very specific options, you might have um, a customer success team, for example, that are working out something like Zendesk. Um, you know, it's a great platform. It's one of the you know, big names within that area. But they're completely unaware that actually the marketing team are paying for something over here as well, which happens to also have help desk functionality. Yeah. And that's where that starts to come in because essentially that cost that is being swallowed by the marketing team or by the customer success team, you know, they're seeing that in a bubble. They are quite siloed. They're not yeah. aware that we're really paying for the same thing twice. Yeah. And we've got that data disconnect. Yeah. We should really have those two things in yeah. one place. It's not always going to be, you know, kind of rip yeah. and replace. Yeah. But that's going to be one of the solutions. That cost thing's quite interesting because when we've worked with some of the enterprise size clients as well, there. I mean, there's kind of an argument. It's like, well, why why do we care that customer success is spending thousands of pounds over here on this tool, which yeah. w they could actually it's do the same budget. thing? <laughs> it's not my budget, isn't it? That's that's so. Like, if you're watching this, please, you know, get together with your teams. Don't don't Definitely. think not my budget, not my problem, kind of thing. Um, but the, I mean, what strikes me actually about cost of systems. You, you talk about the systems themselves, and we have come across when we've dug down and actually done these things, people are paying for systems that aren't even used, yeah. and they don't even know. They're just yeah. like, oh, get the accounts to pull together all of the, you know, all of the line items in these areas. And they suddenly go, hold on, we've got a bill every month from service x and it's really easy isn't it these days with the SaaS platforms yeah, you just absolutely. sign up the subscription it goes out whatever and and nobody's using it yeah. 
Because the person who signed up for it and whose email address it's in the account of, they left six, nine months ago. Yeah. So it's often that's you get to that point where you realize the person that people assumed has been using it or the person whose role it falls into, they've kind of gone, oh, well, I was never shown it. You know, it's too much fuss for me. I just, I work on my spreadsheet, whatever it is. Yeah. And that's why, as part of that process, you want to make sure you're trying to get that holistic view across everybody because yeah. there will be little bits here and there that might seem small. Some of them will be big, but, you know, they, they need to be part of the picture. And in some ways, it might be actually, we'll keep that tool. We just need yeah. to adopt it. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, like, a great tool can be brilliant, but if nobody's using yeah, exactly. it, surely that's... Yeah, if no one's using it or if it's not connected to other tools, that's the other thing because you might have one team really working away on one tool and it's it's doing well for them, yeah. but none of that data is being shared across the business. Right. Um, and that's part of this. So it may well be that when we get to that, that Zendesk you know, scenario, yeah. we keep Zendesk, it's a great tool, but we're going to try and get it connected to the rest of your tools as well because yeah. that's, that's going to make it even better. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so silos, costs, cost in other areas. I mean, you've mentioned already the fact that, I mean, certain tools, they're complicated to use as well, mm. aren't they? They so are. So it's like... User adoption is a real difficult challenge because you can have all the best intentions in the world. You can go on a great sales pitch where someone really shows you how good a tool is. But if you're not kind of shown how to use it, you're yeah. never going to get the value from it. Well, I, I also find that there are certain... Certain tools won't mention it on this uh, on this episode, <laughs> where you end up having to employ somebody specifically to look after the yeah. tool, feed it and water it, and things like. And you say, in this day and age, man, that, that's an expensive salary yeah, that's basically cheap. just just cuddling your technology, and you shouldn't need that because other other platforms don't need that. So there's that one, and then there's also the one where. Um, because when we talk about these tech stacks, we're also talking about things like platforms right from things like social media and web. And with our experience, I've seen it a lot where on web platforms, when we've done the assessment and we've talked to people about it, cost of ownership of certain website technologies mm -hmm. that, let's be honest, some of them are past their sell-by date. They're spending a lot of money with a technical agency, again, in my you know, lingo, feeding and watering the technology, not yeah. moving it forward, but, oh, we're going to charge you X thousand because you've got to do updates. We're going to charge you X thousand to put this on its own you know, uh, infrastructure and those kind of costs. Again, as well, they'll, they'll be paying for features within those platforms that sort of start to tread on the toes of marketing tools, yeah. but actually don't really do the job that well. You know, yeah. So whether we're talking about things like form captures or automated emails, there's a reason why there are a lot of platforms out there doing this stuff because it, it's actually quite difficult to do it well. Yeah. Um, there are some big players in all of these areas that do these things really well, but there are lots of people who are kind of offering it, but not really. Yeah. And it comes packaged with, like you say, with a website or whatever. And then you kind of go for that, that gets bolted on and you end up with this kind of Frankenstein's monster, yeah. you know, creation that's not really ticking yeah. your boxes, but you think it is. Yeah, it's almost that's almost the, the the opposite to the people going out and buying all of the best of class. It's actually people going, oh well, we could kind of fudge it and do it a bit yeah. poorly exactly. over here, and they've done it and ended up actually what they're not paying for platform, they're paying for in labour, inefficiency, and all of that, aren't yeah, they? Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you you and the guys you you uncover a lot of this stuff. Is it something that people can do in-house? It is potentially. It's, a, it's not necessarily an undertaking that a lot of companies are going to have the resource for without kind of major disruption. You know, the, the trouble with what we're talking about, revenue, revenue generation, it's business critical stuff. It's not something you want to just switch off, go and find another solution and then switch back on. Yeah. You know, there's some delicacy in terms of making sure there's kind of continuity of business, data is migrated and not lost. You know, there's a lot of different elements to this. Um, yeah. Of course, a competent team can take it on. It's something that you could do yourselves. We would advise bringing in people like us, experts yeah. in the field. We bring a number of things. We bring the resource to actually do this. 
Yeah. We bring an expertise of having worked across dozens of industries and have done this many, many times with lots of different clients. Okay. But we also bring an external viewpoint, and I think that's really important. Okay. When you look at a large company, there are going to be lots of stakeholders with different agendas, different views. Um, historically, they are going to own these different platforms. And you kind of, it's, it's not mediation. Right. You kind of need that, that external voice to say, this is a good solution and find that middle ground that's going to work really well. Right. So what you're saying is if like a CMO who's watching this goes, right, we need to do a tech audit. Clearly, I know we've got some out of date things. We're probably being inefficient. We want to use AI more. Let's get to grips and do this. They could go and say to one of their team, hey, let's do a tech. But what's going to happen is as soon as they need to start touching other areas like talking to sales, talking to customer service, yeah. because they're from the marketing team, just they're going to have a marketing bias, yep. but also they're not going to get the support, are they, from no, this? No, absolutely. And ultimately, you know, that disconnect between teams is a big part of this. You know, they have historically grown up in that way. Yeah. You know, they've had their own resources, their own budgets, their own platforms. You know, they are not accustomed to having to come together and, you know, I don't want to say make compromises because ultimately the result will be better. Yeah. But let go of things that they've done a certain way or let go of platforms that they think are great. And, you know, realistically, they need to kind of have that voice to come in and say, look, you don't have to let go of your sales platform and you don't have to let go of your marketing platform. We can yeah. make this work. Um, but that conversation has can, to be had. <laughs> I can I can imagine I can imagine the politics and the conflict <laughs> involved if you know sales did a project to assess all of the technology in the in the the company and then told marketing that marketing needed to change their platform yeah. or vice versa. So you're probably the referee's not the, the right term, <laughs> no. but by, by being the independent person, you're, you're actually giving the senior leadership team an unbiased, balanced view of, this is, what, this is what you should do here, this is what you should do here, so that actually it can be accepted as unbiased, yeah? Yeah, I think so. And it's also a case of, if you, as a, as a sales leader say, go out to find solutions without consulting with the rest of the, the wider business, you're going to be met with lots of people who want to sell you stuff, sell right. you more stuff, more solutions, bolt on more stuff to your tech stack. Yeah. And actually, that's not always the answer. Yeah. Sometimes it's actually saying, look, let's just reel it in, let's consolidate. Yeah. We don't need to just keep adding to this. We can actually streamline this. We can simplify everybody's daily work. Yeah. You know, we can reduce costs. And it's, I suppose that's where we're coming from, because yeah. invariably we're telling people usually to remove unnecessary tools and save money and and yes sometimes you have to get some other things or add things on but we're trying to get people to use technology better typically aren't we rather yeah, than add more to it absolutely and that's one of the other things we'll bring we we can help train teams up to use tools better we can actually help adoption rate across the business we can make sure that any new um, tools that are sold in are getting used and existing tools are getting used you know that's a really important part of this so you're saying a, a good tech stack audit and assessment actually includes looking at training requirements then yeah i think so i think so i think it has to be you know potentially one of the last parts of of the process is saying you know we can get all this in place but actually we need to refine these processes we need to make sure people are adopting the tools and empowering people and we talked about having you know these employees that are kind of admins on some of these um, you know some of these tools yeah that doesn't empower the rest of your team that actually hampers them because ultimately they have to go to that person to make change you know and we've seen it with clients in the past where that person's kind of like no no, no there's a code freeze in place we can't make changes it's like well do you really want to have your whole business hanging on that one person's you know processes S so ultimately this review of your your tech stack of your processes it has to be about empowering your team to use the tools hopefully right. the right tools yeah um, and then hopefully just in alignment with each other a bit of harmony across the business yeah. that's really the outcome of what we want to see okay and and you're now talking about outcomes interestingly you said starting you know with some objectives in mind is it okay if when you get to the, if you like, the end when you got the recommendations, you know, 
should we say things have changed? So for example, you might start the assessment thinking, um, what we need to do is we need to cut costs of technology and systems. Is it okay to get to the end and have a situation where it's like, actually, we need to spend a bit more on technology. The outcome is we need to spend more on technology because we've found that we're wasting loads of time to sell or something like that. We can. I think so. I think as long as we're talking about this whole thing as being the revenue generation, as long as we aren't actually, you know, affecting profit and reducing revenue. If, well, as long as we are affecting profit upwards is, exactly, is what yeah, we absolutely. want. Absolutely. But as yeah. long as we are demonstrating that the additional cost is there for a value reason. Right. You know, I think. There'll be lots of things that might change as we go through. You know, you're saying they go in looking to save costs. Yeah. And actually somewhere in the middle we discover actually something they'd really like is to be able to attribute better. You know. Right. And we do see that a lot. People halfway through kind of go, Well, actually, I'd really like to be able to see better reports and dashboards and and that's fine. We can bring those elements in as we go. Um I think we still need to keep those original goals in mind. Yeah. And ultimately, we are talking about revenue generation, and that's got yeah. to be at the core of what this is. Yeah. Um, but these things do uncover stuff as we go through, and it's yeah. undoubtedly that the goalposts might change, and that's fine. You know, that yeah. can be baked into the process as we go, but it needs to be kept in mind. I suppose that that's really interesting that you bring up the the attribution thing um, and the reporting because whilst you might go into something thinking, oh well, what we should do is we should you know, do things to effectively to make more money, sell more. If you don't have the, if you haven't got the attribution accurate yeah. and you haven't got reports to see what's going on, you don't know where to spend the money to get the best exactly. And outcomes. it does kind of come down to the you don't know what you don't know thing. Right. And ultimately, if part of this process means we bring in, let's say, a CRM that connects your data in a way you hadn't had before, yeah. you might not be aware that you can get these kind of revenue reports based on marketing yeah. activities, for example. Yeah. You might not be aware that you can automate your, your emails based on sales data. And if you don't know you don't know that, then yeah. it's not going to come out until we go through that process. So it's, it's looking backwards, if you like. So when you do a, a, an audit or assessment for people, you're looking backwards at what they're doing, what they've been doing, what systems they've got. But you're actually also looking forward for them on their behalf yeah. to say in front of you with these opportunities and these things that you can bring in and you can benefit for. for so you're giving them both of those views effectively in a con consolidated, coherent yeah. way that they can understand. Yeah, absolutely. Because these are companies that have been through this process probably many times before of buying in new systems and new yeah. solutions. And there's always probably been a little bit of a short, you know, short-term view on what they're doing. Yeah. You know, we said it's kind of buying a specific system for a specific solution. Yeah. So you go and you say, what's the best in class email service provider? And you come in and you take that one off the shelf and you go with it. Yeah. And ultimately, if we did the same thing as part of this process, they would come out with a, a short-term view of this tech stack and it wouldn't right. fit them for the future. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of this is kind of building in potentially things like scalability for their business, yeah. making sure that they are actually in a position where they can grow and not suddenly go, oh, we've outgrown the system now. Right. Um, and having that baked into the plan because otherwise yeah. it just leads down the same path. Okay. Um, so there might be some people sitting there now thinking, all sounds fantastic, Chris. He clearly knows his stuff. Sounds like it could be a very long time to get something like this done. So what, over what time window do you guys typically execute one of these audits and go from yeah, walking so in the door and shaking hands and sitting down with the people and starting to going understand? To, it's going to vary a little bit by the size and the complexity of a business, yeah. of course. But I think when you've got you know the right stakeholders involved in a conversation, we can get to the point where we've got you know the goals outlined and we've got a good framework of what is probably going to be within the scope of this. Yeah. in an initial discovery call. Yeah. So we would typically okay. go down the route of sending out a bit of a survey in advance, give people a bit of yeah. a warning, like go and find out what your you know, your account system is, go and find out how you send your emails, yeah. all those sorts of things. Get them to do a little bit of a check around first. Have that discovery call where yeah. we sit down with you know probably kind of head of marketing, head of sales, business owner. It doesn't have to be too yeah. many people involved initially. Have that discussion and you know get a good idea of what's involved, what the process currently yeah. is. 
even in that first call, it will usually unsurface a couple of bits. You know, right. we've had things before where people have got like a contact us form on their website. Yeah. And no one's picking up the contacts yeah. submissions. So yeah. so light bulbs are going on yeah. right from the You know, sometimes start. those things come up very, very quickly. But, but give me give me a sense of so we're in, you know, let's take a significant large size business, you know, doing tens of millions of pounds let's say B2B for the sake of argument or whatever. I know we do a lot of B2C as well. Are we talking about you can do one of these audits? Does it, is it over a period of month? Is it three months, you know, six months? The actual months? audit you do within the month. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah, so you you get the information in fairly quickly. Yeah. That is assuming that obviously within your business, people are available to, to kind Have of bring that information in. And, you know, sometimes these things might trickle over to kind of six weeks, but... Typically, that audit okay. is not as invasive and not as intrusive as you might okay. think. Um, and at that point, we can then start to formulate what the solution is okay. to, you know, to get things working better. Okay. And typically, because I've seen it and I've quoted out, we, we're talking about, you know, thousands of pounds here, but we're talking about single-figure thousands of yeah. pounds to oh, do yeah, these things. Absolutely. Which I suppose, if you think about kind of how much money people are a spending on platforms but more importantly it's the salaries isn't it on these the, the people using the platforms yeah it is you know and i think we're talking about platforms here that often are tens of thousands of pounds yeah sometimes monthly um yeah if you know if i went into a, a business and said to them we could probably remove that within six months if you think about those sort of savings over the course of months and years you know, like you said, the, single the figure are, thousands to do this audit is nothing really. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, you could be talking about an ROI. You get that within within a couple of months of doing the audit. If, yeah, exactly. You know, and yeah. that's not even factoring in the improvement to processes and lead flow and all these sorts of things. Which means faster sales, shorter sales cycle, more sales. Yeah, and less leads volume. drop through the gaps. You know, we talked about the yeah. contact form. That's a particularly unusual one. Yeah. But there'll be all sorts of things where people aren't getting re-nurtured. We're not capturing the you know, yeah. all those little nuances in the data. And that's really where the value starts to come in. Okay. People have the option of doing it themselves, but we're saying polit politically with the small p, that's, that's quite difficult to do. You might not have the people also capable of doing it. Because, you know, you guys have done quite a few of these haven't you we so. have and it, i think it's that expertise that we'll bring that will help with the future proving and stuff because we'll have solutions that we can yeah. roll out that you know you don't have to go out and research these things yeah. we can help kind of deploy them it's, it's definitely one of those ones where it's a bit of a slam dunk to to use yeah. externals on this okay um so i suppose people can get in touch with you you know um through well through the website through um, Zoe typically would talk to people yep. or myself. Um, so yeah, that's how to get in touch. Is there anything that um, you know you want to leave people watching with on this? You know, is there is there like a I don't know three questions that they can ask themselves, which mean <laughs> like how how much they need that audit? Um, do you have something like that? Okay, question one would be: Do you really think you know? what systems and processes your business are using. Because I suspect most business leads will probably go, eh, no, probably not. <laughs> um, question two would be, are you looking to scale your business uh, or are you trying to cut costs? Because both of those things can be factored into this. So if you're scaling on one side of it, you, yeah, need, because, to do, you need to know what yeah, you've got. If you've got plans if... in place for scaling, you know, you need to have this stuff in place first because it will fall over and it will catch you out when you really don't want it to right so now okay. would be the time to do it and if and at the same time if you're in that you know tough economic times are we really getting the maximum bang for our buck yeah. and and again we're talking not just about what you're spending on the systems but basically getting the efficiency out of the people yeah. who are using the systems Absolutely. you need to do it okay third thing bit yeah. of a cop out maybe but why not now is you know the best time to get this done there's a lot of exciting tech that's come out in the last you know five years and we are at a place now where a lot of them are quite established. And yeah. if you've not already got on that boat, if you've not already gone through this process, I think you'll be quite amazed at the results when you go through it. Okay. So the devil's advocate, there's somebody just watching it there and they're going, why not? Well, it's because I could spend that X thousands of pounds on something else. Yep. Have you ever done an audit and it's been like 
there are no savings to be had and there are no improvements to no, be had. Never. And how, how close have you ever been to that? <laughs> Not even slightly. No, there is always there is always pretty fundamental stuff that okay. needs to be connected or fixed. Okay. We're going to hold that to you. We're going to try and see if you can make sure you can keep that 100% <laughs> record. Okay. Well, that's, that's great. I hope that's been uh, useful for everybody watching uh, and listening. Um, yeah, I suppose uh, comments on the on the bottom of the um, thing as always. And uh, if you have enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Also, please feel free to put those questions in the comments um, if you've got questions for Chris. Yeah, we will or, reply to them also. Yeah, or, or contact us directly. Um, easiest to do that um, through the innovationvisual.com website um, or the usual social media channels. Absolutely. Chris. Thank you very much. Always great to Thank you. chat to you about these things. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.